Hello and welcome to part 11 of Let's Translate Light Novels, a series where we look at this out-of-print light novel, Seiran Den, and I have some of my patrons try their hand at translating it, and I critique their translations, and in doing so, show the translation process, and also teach a little advanced level Japanese. As always, check the video description for a disclaimer about this series, as well as a credits list of the translators who contributed to this episode if they wish to be named. So we start with some dialogue. Ne. This is Talia speaking. <laughs> uh, patron A. Um, Ayuru, what did he look like? So this is referencing a line of dialogue that happened in the last episode. Check episode 9. Episode 10 was sort of like a holistic recap of translating light novels. Uh, check episode 9 uh, for a refresher. <laughs> it, it's basically her responding to Ayuru being kind of still and motionless and clenching his fists and not saying anything when they're trying to have a conversation. So Ayuru tara, this tara is like, you silly. <laughs> it's like, oh, come on, kind of, kind of thing. Uh, patron A chose to express that as a, a question referencing what she was asking him earlier. What did he look like? What did Tenko look like? So that's a choice. Patron B, Ayur, Ayur, come on. Incidentally, this is a new patron. <laughs> this patron has never contributed before. So Ayur, Ayur, come on. So yeah, that's another way of interpreting this tada after the name. Patron C, hey, hey, Ayuru. That works too. Patron D, Come on, Ayur, tell me, tell me. <laughs> That's another way of saying it. The next line, we've got some narration followed by dialogue. Taria ni yusaburare. Oh, passive voice. You gotta love it. Shounen wa karada no ihen wo satorare nai yo ni. Another passive. Itta. <laughs> Tenko sama wa irai de mono sugoi oki na chikara o motte. Ita. Lots of ellipses in this dialogue. So, Taria ni yusaburare. I hate speaking in passive voice. Anyway, shaken by Talia, uh, or Talia shook him in active voice. The boy, uh, Ayuru, shounen wa karada no ihen. So this ihen, this came up many episodes ago. It's like um, an illness, a change, uh, yeah, it's like an odd, an, ab an abnormality of your physical health sort of thing. It's not very easy to translate into English, but if you look up the definition in Japanese, it makes a little more sense. Satorare uh, nai yoni, so so that she would not uh, satoru it, which is like to to um, well, like satoru. It's like a, it's sort of like an enlightened way of saying to understand something, basically, uh, to to tell, basically, that he is. Ill, uh, that his body is just kind of um, so the boy said in a way yoni itta that Talia would not notice that something's wrong with him uh, as she was shaking him. Tenko was very very magnificent idaide very great very big. Monosungoi chikara o motte ita. So monosungoi is like incredibly big very. It's just a, a modifier there. Uh, a big, big power, great, vast power. Big power sounds dumb. <laughs> so different word for oki in this case, uh, besides big. Uh, ita, like uh, he had uh, very big powers and he was really powerful. He was kind of saying vaguely. So patron A, Talia gave him a little shake. So patron A changed this to active voice. Good choice. Lord Tenko was magnificent and he had tremendous power. Ayuru said, trying not to make Talia aware that something was wrong with him. So patron A flip-flopped. This shounen wa karada no ihen wo satorare nai yo ni itta. Uh, followed by the dialogue, patron A put that tag at the end. And you can do that. Uh, and that was a good choice, because that's more naturally how we would convey that in English. Patron B, Talia whined, shaking him out of his reverie. So the Talia whined can come from, ne, ne, ayuru tara. You know, it's in English, you don't always have to say said, 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 said. And very clearly she's like whining or, you know, she's being, she's shaking him. And being, so whine works here. Um, shaking him out of his reverie. I don't know if it's exactly a reverie because like a reverie to me feels more like, ah, a calm trance where I'm imagining butterflies and ponies and rainbows. Whereas Ayuru is like uh, having a PTSD flashback of like how evil Tenko was at the summoning ceremony. So I don't know about reverie. Um, Ayuru was careful not to betray his change in constitution. That's very literal. 
Uh, well, not the betray part, the change in constitution for Yi Han, that's pretty literal, when he responded. Lord Tenko had a mighty presence. He radiated with power. I like the radiated uh, from motteita. Motteita is simply he had, uh, but radiated with. That's cool. Uh, perhaps it's a little too poetic, though, because Ayuru is kind of being plain in his speech here. Okina chikara o motteita is, is a pretty plain way of saying it. Radiated with, you know, power or whatever is a little more grand, and I don't think Ayuru would be speaking that way right now. Uh, but I like, like, the, the turn of phrase and the wording of that. Um, patron C. Uh, Talia called him as she shook him. So active voice again. Both, all three patrons so far have uh, changed the yusaburare passive to active voice. Lord Tenko was incredible. He had such tremendous, great power, Ayuru muttered quickly. I like muttered. <laughs> quickly picking up a pebble and throwing it into the lake to hide that something was wrong. So this part actually comes from the next um, part of dialogue. I had a really hard time when I was preparing uh, my notes uh, to go over this episode because like this section here, there's like dialogue um, sandwiched with little tags and description and each patron kind of chose to break it up in different ways. So I, I kind of did my best to like add the spaces uh, for the chunks just so it's a little more clear. But yeah, this this looks like uh, patron C just completely added the throwing the pebble part, but it comes later, so don't worry. Uh, patron D, Talia grasped his shoulders and shook him. And and patron D added a little note here saying, well, it doesn't literally say that she grasped his shoulders and was like shaking him by the shoulders, but they felt that like it would be nice to, to add that because just shook him seemed a little plain. I don't really think shake is like, I think if you look at patrons A, B, and C, Talia gave him a little shake. Talia whined, shaking him out of his reverie. Talia called as she shook him. I think those work fine. You don't have to you know, explicitly be like, she was shaking his shoulders. Like, I like it, but it's not what it was saying in the Japanese. Uh, it's very nitpicky, though. Doesn't really matter. He, dot, 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 Lord Tenko was, Ayer stammered, trying to ignore the strange trembling in his body. He was really big, really, really powerful. I like this. So note that patron D put that dialogue tag the um, that came before Ayer's line here. Shonen wa karada no ihen wo satorera nai yo ni itta. Uh, patron D chose to kind of sandwich that dialogue tag between, uh, like, Ayuru's stammered speech. And they added the, the verb stammered instead of just said, uh, because Ayuru is stammering or, you know, talking with pauses and ellipses in his speech, much like I am right now. <laughs> uh, and I like the, the wording here. I like the character voice of he, Lord Tenko was, he was really big really, really powerful. I like that because, again, Ayuru is not exactly being poetic here. He's really terrified. He's, you know, having a PTSD flashback about how terrifying Tenko was and how Tenko made him, like, physically ill. Uh, and he's feeling physically ill now, recalling it. Uh, he's not necessarily going to use grand language um, like magnificent and had tremendous power or a mighty presence radiated with power. It's like that sounds super cool, but it's not quite Ayudu's voice right now. Ayudu's terrified uh, and patron D's dialogue um, and patron C a little bit as well, like brings that out more. Okay, the next section, narration. Ayudu wa tossa ni mizumi no waki no koishi o nage ireta. So this is where the throwing the pebble comes from, from Patron C's translation. Uh, so, so the, the little, he suddenly took the little pebble um, by the edge of the lake and threw it. There was a lot of this in the last section, if you'll recall. Talia was throwing pebbles into the lake. Sore wa, uh, the pebble, um, ano toki, so that night when, when the incident happened, <laughs> when Tenko was summoned, um, the giant apparition, the giant shadow appeared. So uh, ataride, the spot where the giant apparition appeared. Uki na nami no wa, so a big uh, circular wave ripple. Uh, itta. So it made a big, it spread out and like continued to spread out. 
uh, if there were no small small tsu in there, and if it were just hirogete ita, it's just like, well, it was spreading, um, it was widening, but it's hirogete ita, it's like spreading and widening out kind of until it dissipated into nothing, this sort of imagery there. Um, so he threw a little pebble and it landed right where Tenko's shadow had appeared that night. Um, and it made like this rippling circle thingy. So patron A translated that more eloquently, I hope. <laughs> he suddenly grabbed a pebble and threw it into the lake, period. I like that. It landed in the spot where Lord Tenko's shadow appeared, had appeared would be better there, months ago, and made much larger ripples than what Talia's pebble made. So that then what Talia's pebble made was completely not in the original Japanese, but it was in the story. Talia had the in a pebble before, and it did make a ripple. Um, and ukina nami no wa. So um, it's implied that his pebble made a bigger circle. And what this does symbolically is it's showing his struggle. You know, Tali is pretty casual about this whole thing. Like, yeah, what happened that night? I'm gonna throw pebbles. But for Ayuru, he's reliving a very traumatic experience. So uh, he's gonna have a little more tension. The circle's gonna be a bit bigger. So I like that imagery, even though it wasn't explicitly stated in the original Japanese. Uh, patron B. Suddenly, he picked up a stone and whipped it across the lake. I like whipped it. Uh, a ring of waves rippled out from the place where that fearsome shadow had appeared the night of the ritual. So that's a little bit... Uh, we went into this, I think, in the last episode or the episode before, how incredibly, like, wordy um, Japanese sentences can be. Uh, the place where that fearsome shadow had appeared the night of the ritual. You have all these, like, words to describe the spot where the stone landed. And sometimes it can get a little run-on sentency. Could have reworked that a little bit. Uh, patron C. Rings rippled out from where the giant apparition had appeared that night. So if you recall, Patron C had mentioned the pebble in the previous section. Ayuru muttered, comma, quickly picking up a pebble and throwing it into the lake to hide that something was wrong, period. New thought. Rings rippled out from where the giant apparition had appeared that night. And Patron C made a little note. I wasn't sure if kage meant shadow or just figure form or both. Yeah, kage can be a little vague. That way, I like apparition personally. Uh, and note how nice and like short and concise this this would be great game translation here or manga translation because it's nice and concise very tight. Rings rippled out from where the giant apparition had appeared that night. Uh, so this whole like in the spot where da -ba -da -ba -da, just from where you don't have to say like in the spot where just from where. Uh, it's, it's shorter and cleaner and less wordy less run on sentency. Patron D abruptly comma so instead of suddenly, abruptly, I like abruptly, he snatched up a nearby pebble and hurled it into the lake. Large ripples spread across the surface just as they had when that enormous shadow appeared. So I think patron D is confusing the sorewa. Uh, the sorewa is in reference to the pebble. It landed in the same spot, the pebble, sorewa, where Tenko's big shadow had appeared that night and then waves rippled out. It's not comparing it to like it spread across the lake just as it had when uh, the shadow had appeared. It just it landed in the same spot where that giant shadow had appeared. Uh, the next section, narration. Tariaba nakaba hoshin jōtai de kōsui wo nagame tame iki wo tsuku. So nakaba is like half halfway. Hoshin uh, jōtai is sort of like vacant, like you know, just kind of head in the clouds. Kosui is, if you look at the kanji, it literally means lake water. Uh, nagame, to, to gaze at. Uh, Tameiki o tsuku, inside. So Talia, like, stared at the lake water kind of half in a daze and sighed. Uh, dialogue. So na no, so yo ne. Datte, tenko sama wa, atashi tachi no yona shousu minzoku ni atataka na ame o mukete itsu mo mamotte kudasatte iru kata da mono. So very, very humble, very like honorable Japanese here. Once she starts talking about Tenko Sama, which makes sense. So, oh, like so na no, oh, like so that's what happened. So yo ne. It's like that makes sense. I could see why you would say that. That te after all, um Tenko Sama wa um atashitachi no yona shousu minzoku. So um shousu minzoku ethnic minority, uh, as we went over in former videos. Uh, no yoni, so ethnic minority like us, atatakana me wo mukete, uh, 
like turns warm eyes towards us is literally what that is, um, but like looks fondly upon us, um, smiles on us, kind of like, you know, just looks at us with love and warmth. Um, and itsumo mamotte kurasatte iru. So always protects us humbly, <laughs> honorably. Kurasatte iru. Okata, a very important person. Damono. So this damono is this emphatic, like, after all, I know to be true that Tenko, like, looks upon a poor, lowly, little, like, ethnic minority like us with, with warm eyes, and, and he always protects and takes care of us. That, that ex of course, so of course he looked grand and big <laughs> when you saw him that night. So, patron A, Talia dreamily looked out over the lake and gave a sigh. I see. Yeah, you're right. Lord Tenko is the one who watches over outsider clans like ours so warmly, so he should be very powerful. Lord Tenko is the one who watches over... That sounds a little weird. Uh, I can't quite place my finger on why it sounds a little weird. Yeah, it sounds a little, like, robotic or, um, I don't know, like I'm writing a pamphlet <laughs> about Lord Tenko. It doesn't quite sound like, like Talia at that point. I like outsider clans for uh, Shousu Minzoku, though. He should be very powerful. Uh, yeah. That makes sense. Uh, patron B. Really? Talia asked, turning to gaze out at the lake again. Then she sighed. So it's not exactly... She's not asking for confirmation when she says, so nano. She's saying, oh, like, so that's what happened. So that was your experience. She's not, like, asking, really? Is that true? Um, that's how it comes across when it's written like this in dialogue. Talia asked, turning out to gaze at the lake again, left out the nakaba. Um, ah! Adding in the next sentence, the nakaba, Hoshinjotai. Then she sighed, her eyes turning dreamy. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm sure he was. I mean, our tribe is so small, yet Lord Tenko in his kindness deigns to look fondly upon us anyway. He keeps us safe. I like this. She, um, she's doing Talia's saying in, in very grand speech, like, yet Lord Tenko in his kindness, in a capital H in the his, uh, to really deify Tenko, look fondly, uh, deans to look fondly upon us. Uh, I dig that. It's very, like, honorable. <laughs> She's, you know, it, it has that reverence that she needs for this. And then he keeps us safe. Uh, and the exclamation point also for Damono, because she's being very emphatic here, and he keeps us safe. I dig that. Yeah. Reminder that mamoru, that verb, uh, people always translate it as protect. Well, not people always, but like I see it often translated as protect, and it really should not always be translated as protect. It can also mean like keeping people safe. That's another way of saying it. Also just take care of or look after. That's often what it actually means, especially in terms of like, if it's in a slice of life anime and like, Maki-chan wa ore ga mamoru. It's not necessarily I will protect her. It's more like I will take care of her. Uh, protect implies like there's some danger, <laughs> like imminent danger that will befall this character. But it, yeah, it's more like to take care of somebody. Like it can literally also be to protect. And in this case, it would be also to protect or to keep safe. But just a reminder that it doesn't always have to be protect. Uh, patron C. Talia looked out the, at the water half-heartedly and sighed. So Hoshin Jotai is translated as dreamily by the first two patrons and then half-heartedly. And then patron D, spoiler alert, does half in a daze. Note just the different nuances that you can glean from those. The in a daze is a little more neutral. And I like that one the best, actually, because it, it lets it be a little vague. Um, it's not necessarily a negative or positive thing that she's in a daze. The dreamy, to me, that makes it like, oh yeah, Lord Tenko, what a guy. <laughs> and I don't know that that's necessarily at the start uh, what her mood is. Towards the end, I think it is. I think she kind of, she at first she's like, oh, like she's kind of hoping that Ayuru was going to give her more details, I think. And so she's like, ah, oh, so na no, so yo ne. It's not so like, so na no. So yo ne? And that's kind of the implication you get if if you say that she looked dreamily. To me, dreamily just reads more like, oh, like blushing and heart eyes and stuff. I don't know if everybody has that association with dreamily. I do, at least. Um, and then patron C, half-heartedly sounds a little more negative, like, like she's kind of disappointed. And I, I can kind of read that into this again with so na no. So yo ne, I think she is kind of half disappointed here. Like she was hoping that Ayuru would give her a bunch of juicy details about what Lord Tenko is like, and he's like, "Oh, he was really big and and powerful," <laughs> and I think she's kind of disappointed. 
So half-heartedly, I don't think is wrong, but just note the, the difference there that some, some of these translations make it sound like she's happy and some of them make it sound like she's disappointed. Uh, I see, yeah. Lord Tenko always cares and looks after small tribes like us. I like just small tribes instead of like ethnic minority, shosu means oku, small tribes. Makes a lot more sense. <laughs> Sounds less like a textbook. I don't think anybody used ethnic minority in here, which is good, because yeah, that's just weird uh, for this context. Patron D. That's how Talia began. She sighed as as watched as she watched, I assume. The water ripple. I might have made a mistake copy pasting this over half in a day. So that's how Talia began. She sighed as she watched the water ripple half in a day. She was not really saying that's how, but it does work. Again, she's sort of like being like, oh, so that's how he looked. Of course, that is how Lord Tenko, ever watchful guardian, would look, right? As he sets his kindly gaze upon weak people like us Litorans. So remember, Patron D chose to translate um, Hinzoku, the Hin tribe, as uh, Litoran, uh, because it is sort of like of, of water, <laughs> is kind of what the kanji means. That's how Lord Tenko would look, right? She is. She's kind of like piecing it together in her mind here, trying to, to, to see if what Ayuru is telling her makes sense and is consistent with her beliefs, basically. Uh, and at first I think she's a little let down by what he told her, but now she's like kind of justifying it to herself, kind of fixing the cognitive dissonance. Like, yeah, he would look all grand and mighty because he takes care of us. He's such a good god. I love Tenko. And also Patron D did the he with capital H to deify. He sets his kindly gaze upon, so that grand language again, weak people. I don't know about weak people. I like small, uh, like us Latorans. Yeah, ever watchful guardian. Yeah, the little grandness in the language there. I do like that wording. All right, so the next line of dialogue is very short. It's just, ah, <laughs> with ellipses on either side of it. And it's Ayuru saying that. Uh, patron A, yeah. Patron B, yeah, Ayuru agreed half-heartedly. So you can add dialogue tags. It, it really depends on your client. Now that I've actually translated a light novel professionally, I can say like um, sometimes clients will give you more freedom to add dialogue tags like that. I hear agreed half-heartedly is reading a little too much that wasn't necessarily there. Like I don't mind it, but some people might consider that an over-extrapolation. Patron C, yeah. And then patron D, yeah, yeah I guess. So Patron D was, I think, expressing the extra ellipses as just sort of stammering and uh, the tentative, I guess. I like the I guess. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> or I suppose, could be. <laughs> I think that, that conveys his sort of like, yeah, I guess, I don't know. I feel really sick right now and I want to go home. <laughs> it conveys that pretty well. All right, the next line of dialogue. This is Talia speaking. You can tell because there's Atashi. Atashi mo hayaku ome ni kakaritai na. Onna no ko wa juni made matanaku cha. I almost said matanakya. Matanaku cha naranai nante honto ni fukohei da yo ne. With a small tsu to show that she's ne. There's like a nice glottal stop at the end of that. Uh, ne, sore de o tsuge wa kita no? So this long line of dialogue. Um, like to, to be seen by, to see, um, to meet, <laughs> to meet someone's acquaintance. Um, basically, to, yeah, to, to meet someone, to meet someone's acquaintance. Uh, I, I want to, I hope I get to meet him soon too. Um, it's really unfair that uh, girls have to wait until they're 12. Yeah, no, <laughs> it's just so unfair that girls have to wait until they're 12. Yeah, no. Nee, so, uh, did you hear his proclamation? Did you hear his oracle? Because <laughs> that's really what she wants to know. She wants to hear what that oracle was. Uh, patron A, I really want to meet him too. It's so unfair that girls have to wait till they're 12. So, did you hear his divination? Uh, patron B, I can't wait to lay eyes on him myself. Talia sighed again. So added dialogue tag to show that this is Talia speaking, which is fair. Um, it can get confusing um, if you have yeah, dot, dot, dot with no dialogue tag and then another piece of dialogue with no dialogue tags, you can get, the reader can get a little lost. And it's clear if you're a Japanese person because you see that atashi pronoun and you know, okay, that's Talia speaking. <laughs> but in English, there's no gendered first person uh, personal pronouns. So yeah, adding a dialogue tag is fair. It's not fair. 
italicized that girls have to wait until we're 12. Anyway, what then? Did you hear Lord Tenko's pronouncement? This anyway, what then is weird. Um, just anyway, comma, did you hear Lord Tenko's pronouncement? I almost think anyway, dot, 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 did you hear Lord Tenko's pronouncement? Because that's kind of like, she's like, nah. So did they? <laughs> so she's like, so. Did you hear his proclamation? Because <laughs> that's what she really wants to know. I really like the use of italics there uh, to show, because there's a lot of like vocal inflection in this. With that uh, small tsu. This nante is kind of a scoffing sort of thing like, oh, I can't believe that girls have to wait until we're 12. It's so unfair. You know, that, that's kind of her tone. And adding the italics there really helps, and the exclamation point really helps get that across. Uh, patron C. I can't wait till I'm able to see him too. It's not fair that girls have to wait until they're 12, she complained. So complain does that too. Complain does the work. Although I really like italics and exclamation points too. It really gives her more of a voice. Uh, so, did you hear the oracle? That works. Patron D. I want his eyes to fall upon me too. This, this, and I, I can't wait to lay eyes on him myself is also pretty... Uh, a little more literal. However, this omeni kakaritai is pretty like uh, a reverent way of saying it. So I think this was their attempts to make it sound more like reverent, more like, ah, oh, I can't wait to meet our honorable God, <laughs> you know. Um, I want his eyes to fall upon me too, though, I don't know, it sounds a little weird, <laughs> maybe. But then again, it she's being reverent, so it does work. Soon, uh, the exclamation point, I think, helps bring it back into her voice. Um, it's so unfair having to wait until I'm 12, she pouted. So I, again, pouted, it adds in her tone. Oh, did you hear the pronouncements? It's not exactly, oh, exclamation point, it's sort it's ne, comma. And sometimes in Japanese prose, by the way, a comma often means a pause. It doesn't mean like punctuation comma. It's more like ne. Sore de? It's like ne, dot, dot, dot. You can almost think of commas as ellipses sometimes in Japanese prose. Uh, oh, did you hear the pronouncements? So, oracle, pronouncements, pronouncement, and divination for otsuge. We've all had problems like figuring out how to translate otsuge in this, uh, but all of those words work. All right, the next line of narration. Ayuru wa sou kikarete utsumuita. Uh, when Ayuru was asked that, passive voice, kikarete, uh, when she asked Ayuru that, in active voice, utsumuita, like he looked down, he kind of hung his head and kind of, mm. Patron A, Ayuru just hung his head. So patron A eliminated the whole so kikarete part, which is fine. Oftentimes, like, these dialogue tags work that way. Ayuru wa so kikarete. This whole Ayuru wa so kikarete part would have been a dialogue tag to what Talia was saying. It would just be Talia asked. Um, but in Japanese, they'll often move that dialogue tag like to a new line and like uh, add it to a different character in passive voice <laughs> like this. So Ayuru just hung his head works fine. You don't need the Ayuru wa so kikarete. Uh, Ayuru looked down saying nothing for patron B. Patron B also left out the um, so kikarete. And patron C, Ayuru looked down. Again, left out the soki karete, and patron D, Ayuru studied the pebbles at his feet intently. Um, and there was a note, this kind of construction still feels smoother to me than a more literal des description of utsumukuing. <laughs> uh, I suppose, like, there are pebbles by his feet, it's been established that there are, uh, but what the other patrons did works just fine, and they didn't add all this staring at pebbles intently stuff, so you don't have to. Add, add that. You can just say, Ayuru looked down, or Ayuru just hung his head. I like just, because it implies he could have done something else, he could have responded with something, but all he did was just hang his head. And Ayuru looked down, saying nothing also works, because it implies, well, he was supposed to say something, but he didn't. Studying the pebbles of the feet intently is very creative, and I like it personally as an artistic choice, but it's not, it, it, I think it's a little bit of an over-extrapolation in this case. And there are other ways you could have expressed that without adding a bunch of words. Um, dialogue, Talia again. Ah, so ka. Ayuru tara. There's this Ayuru tara again. Oh, Ayuru, oh you. Um, Otsuge wo kiku mai ni netsudashite taore chattan da ne. With a little small tsu <laughs> to show a little cheerful. Da -da. Oh yeah, that's right. Silly Ayuru, you like got a fever and fainted and collapsed before you could even hear the oracle. And she's trying to be kind of cheerful about it even though she's saying something pretty like, oh, 
nuts, right? You got a fever and collapsed before you could hear the proclamation. <laughs> She's trying to kind of make the most of it and be friendly about it. And like, oh, you poor thing. That's right. You, you didn't even hear the proclamation because you got a fever. Patron A. Oh, that's right. You had a fever that day and fainted before you had to hear it. That day, no. <laughs> um, he, he had a fever like when it, when it happened. It wasn't that he had the fever all day. Um, patron B. Oh, that's right. You collapsed with a fever before you could hear it, didn't you? That works. It's, it's missing. Both of these are missing a little bit of Ayuru's tone. Not Ayuru. Talia's <laughs> like sort of forced, cheerful tone of voice. Uh, patron C. Oh, right. You must have collapsed from the fever before you could hear it, right? She's not asking for confirmation. She knows that that's what happened. She's just kind of like, either she's being passive aggressive and she's pretending that she had forgotten. And she's like, oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> so about that fever, uh, why did that happen, Ayuru? <laughs> she might be sort of passive aggressively pretending to remember it in the moment, or she actually, it did slip her mind and now she's remembering, oh, oops, that's right. Uh, by the way, ah. Uh, short like that, either ah with a comma or ah with a small tsu, you can often translate that as oops, because uh, that's kind of what that ah is. It's not like oh or ah. That's more implied like oh, ah. It's more like a oh. It's it's that kind of like gasping like oh <laughs> or oops, kind of the way we'd say that. So, oh right, works. Uh, you must have collapsed from the fever before you could hear it, right? Uh, patron D. Oh, of course, Talia exclaimed. <laughs> that works to add that exclaimed, you took, fe you took fever and collapsed before you could hear, before you heard anything, right? Uh, Patron A is the only one who, who were, phrased it as like, she wasn't really asking for confirmation. And in the Japanese, she wasn't really asking for confirmation. She was like, ah, oh, silly me, that's right. You, you got a fever and collapsed before you could hear it. The ne is not like a ne question mark asking for confirmation, but rather a ne, ah, oh, you poor thing, solidarity kind of ne. Uh, I understand. Um, next line. So this, this is interesting right here. This next line, it's sort of like, is it narration? Is it Ayuru's thoughts? Or is it sort of like Ayuru's thoughts in narration form? Tabun, haha kara kyu ni kaze o hita to demo kikasare teita no daro. Sukkari sore o shinji konde iru shoujo no kotoba ni suku areta yo ni. Ayuru wa sutto me o tochita. So this tabun haha kara kyu ni kaze o hita to demo kikasare teita no daro. You could think of that as like Ayuru is thinking this. Probably she heard from my mother that I had suddenly caught a cold or something like that. Uh, or you could think of it as a narration. Ayuru thought to himself that perhaps his mother had told her that, uh, or perhaps she heard from his mother that he suddenly caught a cold. It, it really is the latter. Uh, it's, it's really more like the narrator is explaining kind of what he's thinking, but it's not literally his thoughts. But in English, it, it can kind of sound weird, like I just demonstrated just now. Like, Ayuru thought to himself that perhaps, like, it gets a little wordy if you do it that way. So um, some of these patrons chose to make this Ayuru's actual thoughts. And I think that works too, although it's not necessarily correct. Sukkari sore o shinji konde iru shoujo no kotoba ni sukuareta yo ni. So, sukkari sore o shinji konde iru. So, shinji komu is like to, to like fall into the belief that. It's not just to believe, it's like to falsely believe in this case. Um, sukkari, like completely. So, shoujo is Talia. Shoujo no kotoba ni. So, from Talia's words, he could, he could tell that she had just like fully embraced the lie, the false belief that sore, that uh, he had. Uh, collapsed from a fever at the ceremony um, that his mom told her. <laughs> Look how incredibly wordy this gets if you try to translate it literally. Sukuareta yo ni, so as if rescued by uh, her words uh, that showed that she thoroughly believed the lie his mother had told her that he had just collapsed from a fever at the summoning ceremony. <laughs> Such a bad translation, please don't translate like that. Uh, he, he closed his eyes. So kind of in better English, like thankful, like I would have felt thankful that, you know, like, oh, thank goodness that Talia believed this lie. Like he closed his eyes in relief uh, that Talia had, seems to have, you know, fallen for that lie, basically. 
So patron A, how do we handle this garbage? <laughs> Maybe mother told, this is italic, so it's Ayudu's thoughts. Maybe mother told her that I caught a sudden cold or something. Ayudu thought he gently closed his eyes, grateful that Talia completely believed his mother's lie. See how much cleaner that is <laughs> when it's written like actual English? Much cleaner. So yeah, the suttome o tojita part definitely works better at the beginning of that next thought. He gently closed his eyes, Great comma, grateful that Talia completely believed his mother's lie. So this skuareta yoni is expressed with just grateful, uh, which works super well. Um, a plus, patron B. His mother must have told her that he had come down with a sudden cold. Relieved that Talia had believed the lie so readily, Ayud closed his eyes. This actually works, even though the word order is kind of kept the same. The skuareta yoni, relieved that, that works too. And look how nice and short it is, nice and tight. I like this one too. Uh, patron C. Perhaps what his mother had told her was that he'd suddenly caught a cold or something. Very wordy. So there, there's a way this could be reworked a little in some words. Deleted. Um, perhaps what his mother had told her. Maybe his mother told her. Or perhaps his mother told her. Uh, that. You don't need what his mother had told him was that. Just perhaps his mother had told her that he'd suddenly caught a cold or something. She seemed to believe it. I like that that isolated sentence there. Ayudu closed his eyes, spared from having to answer. So we have skuareta yoni is uh, grateful from patron A, relieved from patron B, and spared. I like spared, actually. That that shows the, like, rescued aspect of skuareta. So spared is great. Um, patron D. Mother, this is thoughts, Ayudu's thoughts. Mother probably told her I fell ill suddenly, he realized. Those words, comma, and Talia's unshakable trust had saved him. Mm -mm. He closed his eyes in relief. So this had saved him is uh, for skuareta. That's a little too literal. Uh, it's more has ha had helped him save face and not like had saved him, uh, like had rescued him. Those words is kind of weird. That's a little too translatorese. Those words uh, is referencing um, is referencing uh, how how Talia had spoken. Like the the fa the past few things that she had told him implied that she had believed a lie that his mother had told her that he had had a fever. So those words, it's basically like from the way Talia had been talking. It's not like those words, literally. So like from Talia's tone of voice or from what she had said, or you can just eliminate the from those words aspect altogether because it sounds weird. Patrons A, B, and C pretty much eliminated the whole shoujo no kotoba ni skuare, just just get rid of the kotoba, because <laughs> it's referencing what she was saying before, and you don't really need it. So the next line of narration, ano ato tenko ga donna o tsuge o kudashita no ka, sore o sozo shita kare no zenshin ni futatabi hageshi o kan ga hashitta. Kare wa burun to kubi o futta. This is all narration. So ano ato, right after that, tenko ga donna o tsuge o kudashita no ka. So after that, like what kind of proclamation had tenko given? to them after that, comma, <laughs> sore o sozoshita kare no zenshin ni, so sozoshita kare, so he, Ayuru, imagining what uh, Tenko's proclamation was after that, after he collapsed from his fever, so as he imagined the proclamation that Tenko gave after he passed out, uh, zenshin ni futatabi hageshi okan ga hashitta, we went over okan a few episodes ago, it's like, if you look at the, um, Kanji is just cold, it's evil cold, <laughs> like an ominous chill, intense chill. Um, so just imagining what Tenko might have proclaimed after he passed out made his body just erupt in a an intense uh, chill. Once again, futatabi. Kare wa burunto kubi o futabi. He vigorously <laughs> shook his head, kind of like a shiver as well. Uh, Patron A, Ayudu racked his brain over what kind of divination Tenko could have given after he fainted and felt an intense chill run through him again. So I think this racked his brain came from um, don na otsuge o kudashita no ka. Um, patron A, I think, is isolating that as sort of like a question. It's like imagining the question of um, what kind of proclamation did Tenko give? Like Ayudu was like, ah, what kind of proclamation did he give? But just the thought of it, just imagining it made him shake. I don't know if he was really racking his brain, though. It's more like just the thought of it or imagining it. Uh, he abruptly shook his head. Brunto futta. Uh, patron B. Just imagining what kind of pronouncement could have come from that creature sent a sharp chill through his body. 
Uh, that's a bit of an extrapolation, but deserved. Like, we know Ayudu is freaked out <laughs> by, by Tenko, what he saw. He saw something evil that night. Like, he was told all his life that this was a god who loved him. And he basically saw Satan <laughs> at the summoning ceremony. And he's like, ah, cognitive dissonance. Sent a sharp chill through his body. I like the sharp chill. Uh, he shook his head quietly. No, he shook his head quickly. I can read. I got new glasses, by the way. <laughs> Better prescription. I still can't read. Uh, patron C. He imagined what kind of oracle Ten Lord Tenko had given afterward, and once again he felt that intense chill rush through his body. Yeah, it's the same intense chill he's felt before, so this once again, that intense chill works, because it's referencing uh, it's the same intense chill that he felt before. He shook his head as if to shake off the feeling. That's a little wordy. Uh, this whole as if to shake off the feeling, you could express that with an adjective or an adverb, like quickly or abruptly. But that is what he is doing. <laughs> I think he's shaking his head to ward off the image. Um, patron D uh, decided to put this in italics as a question. But what were the pronouncements after that? Imagining them sent fresh chills. Ooh, fresh is nice for futatabi. Uh, rushing through his body. His head jerked. So that's another way of express. I don't know, the head jerking to me, without knowing the Japanese context, I would probably interpret that as like, <laughs> like just kind of like, <laughs> he's possessed. Arr, his head jerked. Yeah, it doesn't quite give the correct imagery. If you know what the Japanese is, it does. But if you're just reading it on its own, it doesn't. Yeah, so this isn't literally him thinking, but what were the pronouncements after that? But it kind of works <laughs> still. Because he is, like, it isn't, these words are not his literal thoughts. This isn't his brain thinking these words. This is the narrator talking about what his brain is imagining. So it's not really linguistic here. Like, it's not his actual thoughts. But by making it his actual thoughts, uh, it's a way of making this a little tighter, which works. Uh, let's see, the next line of narration. Uh, now, this is another one where it's like, is this his thoughts or is this narration? <laughs> so, are wa akumu datta no da. Nushi sama ga anna bukimi na kage nado de aru hazu ga nai. So this is pretty like, I don't know, it, this isn't how people talk. Uh, this no da ending and this hazu ga nai, eh, you know, people can talk like that, but this isn't exactly how Ayuri would talk. This is more like a narrator's talking or like an older dude <laughs> talking. Um, but, you know, it could be Ayuri. I interpret this personally as like, this is the narrator of the book, Nishizaki Megumi, the author, uh, expressing the thoughts that are happening in Ayuru's mind without like spelling them out. And like, this is literally the words that he is thinking. So that was a nightmare. That was just a nightmare. Akumu datta no da. Nushi sama ga are our lord. Anna bukimi na kage nado de aru hazu ga nai. Like he would never uh, be such a creepy, eerie uh, apparition like that. Uh, patron A, that was just a nightmare. This is all Ayuru's thoughts. That was just a nightmare. There's no way our Lord could be such a creepy shadow like that one was. Like that one was is kind of weird. Like that would be would be fine. Uh, creepy shadow. Yeah, again, this is where like if you're a little literal with Kage, I prefer apparition over shadow. But yeah, patron A chose to make this all Ayuru's thoughts. Patron B chose to not do that. It had been a nightmare, he decided. So patron B is doing a little more how I interpreted this. It's basically like the narrator talking about what his thought process it is without revealing the exact words in his brain. There was no way that terrible shadow was their lord. Yeah, terrible shadow, apparition would be cool. Hang on a minute, wasn't patron B the one who'd, who'd use apparition for Kage? Or was that a different person? Uh, that was patron C. Okay, let's see if patron C chose apparition again. Oh, patron C did not. <laughs> That's okay, though. Um, it had to have been a nightmare. There's no way for the Lord to have been that creepy thing. The Lord is kind of weird. Like, Tenko is the one god to them, I guess. I don't know if they believe in other spirits or gods. I don't know if uh, they're monotheistic <laughs> uh, in their worship of Tenko. But the Lord, it sounds kind of weird. I don't know. Like, when I hear the Lord, I just automatically think of the Judeo-Christian Christ or God or something. That That's the imagery it invokes in my brain because I grew up in a Judeo-Christian culture. That could just be my cultural bias speaking. Uh, but yeah, our Lord, I think, would work better. Or our God, uh, to have been that creepy thing. 
like thing is if this were not a telesized thoughts and then you could italicize the word thing that could have worked to use thing but otherwise that creepy thing I don't know that sounds weird I think you should have just used apparition <laughs> like patron C used uh, earlier and been consistent uh, or not I don't know I'm getting tired we're coming towards the end of the episode <laughs> patron D all that was a nightmare he told himself desperately trying to drive that nightmare away ah okay Okay, I see what Patron D is doing here. So Patron D is taking some of the stuff that comes from the next paragraph and moving it. So let's come back to Patron D's later with the next and final paragraph of this episode. So, Didishiku yasashi o sugata o shiteiru ni chigai nai dewa nai ka. Again, this is more like, I don't know, like hotohori, like an emperor or like an older man would maybe talk like this if he's talking kind of nobly. Uh, not Ayuru, not a you know, 11, 10 year old boy. Ayuru wa hishi ni jibun ni soui kikase, sono akumu wo harai no ke yoto shita. So that, if you understand Japanese, is what patron D added to the last section. So, ridishiku yasashi o sagate ni o shiteiru ni chigai nai dewa nai ka. So, ridishiku yasashi, so uh, valiant, uh, chivalrous, and kind. O sugata, so an honorable way of saying form. Sugata is a terrible word to translate. I hate it. Um, it's basically just describing a person, what a person is like or looks like. Uh, nai nai, must be. Um, he must be a very valiant, manly, and gentle god. Ayuru wa hishi ni jibun ni. So, ayuru desperately. Ikikase uh, is to, like, tell yourself, uh, trying to convince yourself, basically. So, hikaseru is to tell someone something with the intention of making them believe it, even though it's probably a lie. Sono akumu o harai no ke yoto shita. So, trying to exercise or get rid of that nightmare uh, that was referenced in the preceding sentences. So, <laughs> patron A, he must look more regal and gentle, Ayuru told himself reassuringly and tried to drive away his nightmare. This and tried to drive away his nightmare is kind of weird. Comma, trying to drive away his nightmare or in an attempt to drive away his nightmare uh, would flow a little better. He must look more regal and gentle. That's how the osugata was expressed. It's basically like, yeah, like had the form of someone that was more regal and more gentle. He must look more regal and more gentle. Uh, told himself reassuringly. Yeah, like trying to drive away his nightmare, trying to convince himself that it's true. Uh, patron B, Lord Tenko's appearance, so Osugata appearance, I generally uh, that's a trap people fall into, is translating Sugata as appearance or form. It's not always the best translation. Uh, but it's not bad in this case. Lord Tenko's appearance would be much nobler and kinder, he told himself, desperate to dispel his own doubts. So that Akumu, uh, patron B translated as doubts, uh, it's literally like trying to get rid of the nightmare that was referenced a couple sentences earlier. Um, ikikase is dispelling your doubts, like trying to dispel your doubts. So this isn't wrong. It's just we're missing that akumu again. Patron C. Wasn't he supposed to look noble and kind? <laughs> Ayuru kept asking himself, trying to drive the image out of his mind. So trying to drive the image, trying to drive the nightmarish image, trying to drive the nightmare out of his mind. Yeah, kept asking himself for ikikase. That also works. Ikikaseru is an interesting verb. It, it really is, it's more, it's more like, you know, uh, something that, like a lie you're telling yourself. Uh, you're trying to convince yourself of something is, is more what it is. Kept asking himself can work too. Patron D, Lord Tenko couldn't have manifested as something horrible like that shadow. He would have been noble, kind, wouldn't he? And now note, <laughs> the part about dispelling the nightmare was was present in the previous one. So patron D's whole thing, all that was a nightmare, he told himself desperately, trying to drive that nightmare away. Lord Tenko couldn't have manifested as something horrible like that shadow. He would have been noble, kind, wouldn't he? See, it flows well when you combine everything together, putting that dialogue tag at, that used to be at the end in the middle, breaking up his long thought. That's what we would do more in English prose. And so this worked really well what patron D did. Uh, I'm running out of voice, and this is the end of uh, part 11 of Let's Translate Light Novels. So thank you for tuning in to part 11. I hope you tune in next week for part 12. 
uh, when we look at more of their conversation and more of these patrons' translations, they all did a really good job this time. Uh, bravo, new patron. <laughs> so uh, at this point, this is where I, I thank all my patrons for uh, helping make this series possible. Like in many ways, like they not only give me money so I can like pay for my electricity bill that I use to make these videos, but they also, you know, contribute the uh, translations to these videos that I get to critique. So that's all really cool. If you want to join my Patreon and like be a part of these videos, that's the $12 level. But if you want to join at a lower level and just basic support, that's an option as well. Uh, and I want to give some special thanks to Greg Lay, Henry Roaming, and Data Fox for being my super patrons. <laughs> and I hope to see you next time.